how awesome is that, dude? That like, is so cool. Can I meet you in the supper room? These are the people who would actually make a little bit of fun with the crowds, but yeah. when the crowds disperse, That's it was it. like, how do I give my life to Jesus? So I thought, what's the alternative? Either I don't say nothing and let them carry on living their life, or I say something and give them the opportunity to reject Jesus. Yeah, yeah. I, what I did know, Robbie, is this. I was never, ever going to say no for them. Right. Like, you say no. You reject them. Yeah. You reject them, because I'm not going to reject them on your behalf. Right, right. Regardless of how you want me to be quiet, regardless how awkward you feel, regardless of how much you want to choke the life out of me right now, <laughs> I'm going to tell you about him, and then you reject him. Yeah. You know, I will not say no for anyone. And did you think that, like, like I'm asking this as a bit of a loaded question, uh, did you think that, like, uh, that, some of these people that this was actually a demonic attack that they were just being demonized that the that demonic spirits were influence like making them angry about it or mm. things like that did that ever occur to you at that time or anything not at the time because the same lads who were telling me <laughs> to shut up in a specific way <laughs> were the same lads who were telling the supervisors and everyone else to shut up in a specific way, you know? Ah, okay. That aggression didn't heighten much more to me. It didn't heighten, but it was more often. Yeah. Does yeah, that make yeah, sense? Yeah. yeah. They were no more aggressive to me. They were just, um, they would make fun a little bit more out of me than another situation sure. that Rose had said. But... When they got them alone, when they were on their own, they would. Oh, yeah. It's interesting. The loudest were the ones who had the sweetest whisper, if that makes sense. Wow. Like, yeah. Canon, you're this, you're this, you're this. None of it makes sense. The crowds of despair. Hey, bro, I just wonder. Yeah. Like, Can oh, my days, you, you are wonderful. Can you help like, me? <laughs> no, when you stop yeah. shouting, you're wonderful. Like, <laughs> yeah. Just, yeah, of course, I'll pray for you. Yeah. That's it was amazing. awesome, bro. I had such. You know, and such a the, beautiful time in that factory. Like with the Italian guy, you mm -hmm. know, in that situation, it's it's one of those things where that when I hear those types of stories, I'm always like, um, like going and 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 with <clears throat> some of these other people that are coming and they're they're actually not just hearing you preach a message mm -hmm. because I think at that time it was more of you demonstrating mm -hmm. the gospel. Yeah, yeah. You were the demonstration. Mm -hmm. Uh, maybe more now you're a proclaimer mm. you're in the proclamation side of things mm. which you were doing it then i'm not yeah. saying you weren't mm. but but your just your life your reactions your mm. actions your stuff mm. was was uh preaching they were seeing something different with you and yeah, like yeah. especially the guys that are sitting there watching you you know um sitting at the table an hour before the shift starts <laughs> mm. you know yeah. just picking up on you know there's something different here there's something you know and and um was there ever a a point or time where you were like, ah, I should blend in better, or I should tone it down, or did you ever go through any of that? And if you, and if you didn't, that's fine. It's just um, out of curiosity. I think there were certain times I should have been more bold. Let me say it like that. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's me trying to keep the fire on <laughs> right now. <laughs> yeah, that's me doing my best to skirt around the, the fact that I was probably lukewarm occasionally. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So let me say it a different way. There's times I could have been more fiery, if that makes sense. So this is important. This is an important part. If I can, <laughs> yeah. and I'm I'm asking you a question, then interrupt no, you. No, please do. But this is an important part that so many of us forget is that we think that, okay, I've got this fire, I've got this, and then all of a sudden going, yeah, maybe I should back off a little bit. Maybe I'm being too obnoxious. Maybe this is being, or the enemy will be like, you're actually turning people away. Now that's the lie, isn't it? That's the one, that's, that's the believable the biggest lie. lie right yeah, there. Yeah. And that tone it down so you're not turning people away, mm. but you would pick up on, no, this is the enemy trying to get me lukewarm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You had the discernment to figure that out. Yeah, yeah. And to go, no. I always tell every everybody that if you're scared mm. to go do something, if you see somebody like across the road and you're like, man, I need to share the gospel with mm. that person or I need to tell them how much Jesus loves them. Yeah, yeah. You know, just that. And then all of a sudden you're like, you get fear or you get reservation about it. That's your confirmation yeah. to go. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. And that's really kind of, was that really how it worked for you? That's, that when all of a sudden you choke, you go, oh, wait a minute. Hey, I don't like this. Yeah, well, it's interesting because every time that would happen, I would think of Billy Graham. Come on. And I would think, no, there's many mighty men and women of God all around the world, but Billy Graham would constantly come to my mind. I wonder if that's the next Billy Graham. Come on. That's what I think. Yeah. When that, like that choking, that could be the next. That man could bring Times Square to a standstill proclaiming the gospel. I'm going. I'm going to tell him. Yeah. And then let him reject Jesus. Yeah. You know, because this is one of the things that, that I was, that I was thinking on the, on the flight over about worry. Cause I was preaching a message not so long ago about worry and how it divides us in two. Mm-hmm. And whether we like it or not, the minute we side with worry, I believe whether we we accept it or whether we acknowledge it, we're actually agreeing with the accuser's lies that God is not powerful enough and enough. We're actually saying amen to the lie that Jesus is not enough the minute oh, we worry. Wow. And we're actually saying amen to the devil's proclamation. Wow. Wow. He's not enough. Come on. Instantly you go into worry. So every time I would feel somewhat choked, now, again, I say every time, that was my intention, not every time I took it. Yeah, and I yeah, yeah, yeah. There's, Listen, bro, there's, there's bucket loads that I never took. Sure, me and, too. And, and, you know, and too. I guess that's yeah. going to continue through life. Yeah. I hope it doesn't. I want that to get less, and I want the right. opportunities. But it, it would always be like, this could be the next pace. The revival could be hinged on his yes. Yeah. Let's just tell him. And yeah. see what he says or what she says. But there was times, there was times, you know, where you just know. And then because the factory was so big, you could never see, you may never see them again. Right, right, because right. Because they work 3, three like, And it, the, the factory is like three square miles big. It's like, yeah. You, when, when there's 3,500 people in there, plus 2,000 cars driving around, plus 1,000 forklift trucks, plus you can imagine how big it is, you may never see them again. That hurt. Yeah. Have I missed it? And then I, all of a sudden I start appeasing myself, thinking God's big enough. Someone else will get him. But I had my chance to get him, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. that's kind of it, yeah.